Today I want to cover the setup and testing of a dual M.2 adapter card that supports one SATA and one NVMe drive. If you're interested in knowing more about how to expand your storage and gain some speed, then please watch the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, then please subscribe and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any new content. Back in June of 2019, I did a video that covered an NVMe to PCI adapter card that was extremely popular, as most of us want extra speed and extra storage. As I was now looking to add more storage to one of my systems, I ran across this very inexpensive adapter that allowed me to add one NVMe and one SATA M.2 drive for less than 20 bucks, which seemed to be a perfect solution as I could benefit from adding a fast NVMe drive and still be able to add an extra SATA drive without adding another card. As a side benefit, this configuration will be real beneficial for older systems that can't boot from PCI Express. You can use a small SATA drive for your boot drive and the NVMe for fast storage, applications, data, or scratch drive. If you're like me, you may have even an extra drive hanging around here and there, and you'd like to add it to your system, whether it's a desktop or even Unraid, this is a great application to be using in your Unraid server because you can actually add two drives. There's really nothing special about adding extra storage, but the idea of adding two drives to one card seemed really interesting, especially since both drives are actually independent and can be written to or read from simultaneously. So let's go through the hardware a little bit before we actually mount this and get it installed in the system. So it comes with the high profile and standard brackets, which is always good. And then it comes with a SATA cable, uh, which we'll get into later as to whether or not you need to use it. And then it comes with two heat sinks and thermal pads, and that's for your two M.2 drives. And of course the, the mounting straps and the screws. Um, I'm going to be using a 960 EVO and a Crucial SATA drive to get this going and show you how this thing works. And of course the card. And the card comes with its own mounting hardware. There are standoffs for the both drives. And we'll be using, uh, we'll be assembling the drives to the thermal pads and the heat sinks and then getting them installed in the card and then running some quick tests to see the difference and to see how they perform together. Because one of the key benefits of this card is by using the SATA cable. Um, first of all, you, you are required to use the SATA cable for the SATA drive. And part of that benefit is that they can read and write independently and also for system compatibility. So if you have an older system that can't boot from PCI Express, you'll be able to boot from the um, standard SATA M.2 configuration. And once you're booted, you'll have access to the NVMe through the PCI Express. So it gives you a little bit of both worlds and it helps with uh, system compatibility. And it also helps with having, you know, two, two drives on one card. So you save a little bit of space and gain a little bit of flexibility. So let's put this thing together and let's see how it works. So before we get into putting it together, I did want to point out one last thing, and that's the configuration of this card. Um, there are two what looks to be identical connectors on it, but they're not really identical. This side is for the NVMe or the PCI Express um, version, which will be the Evo. And then this side, um, and this takes any M key uh, device. And this one here, this top one is for the, is for basically just SATA or a B key device. So that's how we're gonna be assembling it. But basically you're gonna put the thermal pad. Now, I know this is gonna come up, so I'll answer it right now. And it has to do with keeping the labels on. And I'm going to leave that again up to you. I always leave the labels on. To me, it makes only about two or three degrees of difference. And it does void your warranty if you take the label off. So if you want maximum performance and you're going to hit this thing 24 hours a day, then by all means, take the label off. I don't. Um, always remember to take the plastic, um, protective plastic, cover that's on these things you got you got to remove it on both sides otherwise you're going to have some real heat problems it's not going to be effective at all okay so once we have the heat sinks on 
Then we're going to go ahead and put these plastic clips on. And if you've got better heat sinks that you want to use, you can always do that. Um, this just happens to come in the box. And it should be adequate for what we want to do. Okay, so there we got both drives. Um, if you're concerned about which is which, you can always look at the label underneath. Or you can also look at the keys. Since you can really only put them in um, in certain conditions. So... We're going to go ahead and put this in. So this is the uh, crucial drive, which will go up here into this slot. So we're going to be sliding this in here like this. But we got to get the mounting hardware into here. So to do that, what we're going to do is actually take these clips that are on the back. I don't know if you can see these, but these are the uh, actual mounting hardware. They come assembled on the board but they just come in some random location that you know doesn't work for us we need to get it in the position just to support a uh, multiple size drive so let's go ahead and take these off this first one will drop in here so this will be the uh, 2280 position before we put the drives on there let's get the bracket on there so we'll get that on here like this Okay, so we'll get that bracket on there. There we go. And the last thing is to put the drives on, which just kind of slides in here. And then from there, you can mount the drives. And there you go, that holds it in place. So we'll do the same thing with the other one. Go. The one thing you have to be careful about on this is that a um, couple things is that these fit really, really close together, almost too close together. Um, so when you actually mount this in, make sure that you you uh, your heat sinks aren't overlapping on the inside. So if they are, you'll have to loosen them and get them repositioned because they are really tight. And then your the bands that are on here, when you position them, stagger those as well. <clears throat> if they're lined up together, um, you're gonna have a problem. So as you can see, it fits, but it's super snug, which is okay, as long as it fits. So let's go ahead and get that one installed. Okay. Okay, as you can see, now we have them both installed. Make sure they're snug here. And that's what it looks like. And again, you'll see there's absolutely no gap in between these drives. Um, I would have probably liked to see a little bit more space, but it does work, and it is only the heat sinks, so you can reposition these heat sinks a little bit just to get a little bit of a gap in there. So it's not the end of the world but it's just really tight. So you gotta make sure you gotta be a little careful when you're assembling these. So now that we've got our, our uh, card together, of course the SATA cable is gonna plug into here. So we're gonna throw this into my test system. Make sure everything is working first. Let's go ahead and throw it in, run some tests, make sure both drives work and make sure that the performance of both drives is what we expect. And we do expect a difference in performance since this one is a NVMe and one is a SATA. But again, this offers a level of flexibility, you know, especially to older systems and and to um, you know any anything that's not compatible with booting with PCI Express or NVMe. All right, let's put it in and see what happens. Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and mounted this card. Um, you can see I plugged in the SATA port over here, which is plugged into a free port on my motherboard, and it's inserted into a um, PCI Express slot. Now you can do anything above four. So you can do a four, an eight, or a 16. It's only gonna use a times four slot anyway, but you can plug it into anything. In this board, I'm running it into a, a, a by 16 slot, but I'm only gonna be using four lanes. So it should be fine. So now that you can see how I have this mounted, let's go ahead and get this thing fired up and we'll run it through some testing and see how it works. So I went ahead and formatted the drives and set them up as drive E and drive F. 
the testing here is really not to compare the drives or drive performance as much as to see that they both can operate at full speed. In addition, I wanted to demonstrate that both could be run at the same time. So as you can see, even though that they share a card, they're operating as two independent drives. They're also gonna reach the manufacturer's full public specifications, proving that they're not sharing the PCI Express bandwidth in this particular case. And just for comparison, I wanna copy an 18 gig file to both drives at the same time again. Um, keep in mind though, that as we're copying these, even though these, got, these drives are operating independently, they are sharing the source drive, so we will see a slight variation in performance. So anyway, that's about it for today's video, and I hope you found it useful. I'll leave some affiliate links in the description if you want to check out the hardware. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any future content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.